Ok, pues bien, que, ok, so please then let us then stand and let us begin then our celebration singing. Well, the first verse of morning has broken. Morning has broken. <clears throat> morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise from the springing, fresh from the word. And so then let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we come together then to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's first recall our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us then to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Preserve in the midst of your people, we ask, O Lord, the spirit with which you filled the Bishop St. Charles Borromeo, that your church may be constantly renewed, and by conforming herself to the likeness of Christ, may show his face to the world, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. My beloved, obedient as you have always been, not only when I am present, but all the more now when I am absent, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For God is the one who, for his good purpose, works in you both to desire and to work. Do everything without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God and perverse generation, among whom you shine like lights in the world, as you hold on to the word of life, so that my boast for the day of Christ may be that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even in the same way, you also should rejoice and share your joy with me. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his. The Lord is my light and my salvation. 
I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Alleluia. Uh, Alleluia. Uh, Alleluia. Uh, Alleluia. Uh, Alleluia. Uh, Alleluia. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia. 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 <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. Greeting his father or mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his, his or her own life, that person cannot be my disciple. For whoever does not carry his or her cross to follow me cannot be, uh, cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there's enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding oneself unable to finish the work, the uh, onlookers will laugh and say, this one began to build what, uh, uh, but did not have the resources to finish. Or, or what king marching into battle, would not sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing on him with 20,000 troops. If not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce his or her, all his, uh, his or her possessions cannot be my disciple. My friends, the gospel of the Lord. So then, please be seated. So then we're gathered on this day, and uh, yeah, last night, uh, yeah, for many of us watching the election returns, it probably have been a relatively long night, but uh, thankfully, Things are basically calm. There's still folks, uh, there's still votes, I suppose, that need to be counted, but it's, but all things considered, I think we've, as a, as a people, have done well to just basically to remain, uh, to remain calm through it all. And, um, that's, you know, as we look at the scriptures for today and even the saints that we remember today, it's always good to remember that, uh, that, you know, that Throughout all of history, there were times uh, or moments that uh, that certainly seemed uh, very, very difficult and very, very ang you know, anxiety-producing. And yet, ultimately, if we put our trust in God, it will turn out uh, to turn out well. It may not turn out the way we want, but it will turn out, uh, in fact, in a way according again to God's will. And uh, we. We do see this in, in the gospel reading today that um, we hear Jesus uh, well, challenging the folks to, above all, put aside their egos and to look around, uh, around them. And one of the sayings in particular at his, in his time would have probably been something that would have caught the attention, certainly, of the people and perhaps even some anger among some of the people. And that was when Jesus said, what king marching into battle would not sit, first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he really can successfully oppose another king advancing on him with 20,000 troops? 
And that was that uh, certainly in Jesus' day, Israel was occupied. There certainly would have been plenty of patriots out there who said, oh, we must fight the Romans and so forth. And Jesus was saying there, in effect, uh, you guys about it. You know, the, it's not to say at all that, that, uh, that the Israelites were not justified in opposing the, uh, the Romans where, you know, did not have their reasons and so forth. And yet, look at the numbers. Look at what, what realistically is possible. And, uh, indeed, the Catholic Church has held this through the centuries as part of its just war theory. That one of the criteria in, in a just war theory is probability of success. That you can be just, you can have your, your cause may be absolute, so forth, but if you can't win, if you can't make it better, it's better to not produce a slaughter. And that's, you know, that's what Jesus was saying here, uh, reminding the people of his time, you know, uh, here, and really something that for various times has been, uh, you know, has been the truth. Now, uh, St. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, which we've been following in these days, he was writing to a community that was suffering quite a bit. Uh, and uh, what he was trying to assure them was, is, is, is that not that he was going to remove the suffering from them, but that he was, he was saying that Jesus himself emptied himself, that Jesus himself suffered as well, so that, yes, the pain was real, he wasn't denying the pain, but that, in fact, that somehow, in some way, that pain still can be redemptive, redemptive in Jesus, and so we remember that. Finally, today we remember this uh, Saint, Saint Charles Borromeo, and uh, he, he was one of the principal uh, figures in the Council of Trent in the uh, late 1500s, early 1600s. Think that our time is chaotic and that the world's going into hell in a handbasket and all of this. He lived in a much, much more difficult time. I mean, Europe was not merely split, it was at war. Uh, you know, there were all kinds of uh, theologians then going out in every direction, basically having given up on, on the church, as it were, and basically going their own way, causing all sorts of confusion throughout, across all of Europe. And it was, it was a very, very tough time, you know, that, that, that Europe from the north was in civil war, basically the Protestants to the north, Catholics to the south. And, you know, if that wasn't enough, of course, you know, the Muslims to, to the south of, you know, of Europe were pushing, as it were, northward as well. He could have thrown his hands up. He could have said, this is awful. Uh, there's, uh, there's nothing that, uh, you know, that we can do. You know, this, you know, it's just terrible, etc., cetera, et cetera. And instead, no. He took uh, stock of the situation in which uh, the, you know, the people were in, and he promoted a response of the church that exists to this day. One of the in the church at the time was the education really even of the clergy. Education was very weak across all of Europe and the clergy were not educated particularly well. Okay, maybe in the cities they were decently educated, but, uh, but you go out into the provinces, into the villages, basically a priest before the Council of Trent in a small village uh, he would get his job as an apprentice, that the priest of the time would take some of the altar servers or whatever, you know, help them along. And, you know, one or two of them who seemed uh, particularly good at what they, they did, well, you would take them the more, be, become an apprentice, and eventually that, that priest would be, or that person would become a priest for the village. Problem with that was, this is just that even the priests, basically said oftentimes their prayers by heart. 
that they couldn't read or couldn't read well. And uh, so this was what uh, what St. Charles Borromeo, St. Uh, Robert Bellarmine, and the other folks in the Council of Trent did is saying, we need to desperately improve the education, at least of the clergy, so they can run the church right. And they took, in fact, you know, okay, a, uh, a, a communications technology at that time, the printing press. And they said, okay, there are all kinds of people who are telling us that this is a terrible instrument, that it's just sowing division, that anyone with a printing press can print anything they want, and they're, you know, they're scattering it across the whole thing. And the Protestants were starting to, of course, print the Bible and saying everybody has a right to read the Bible, no matter what education they have again, and so forth, and interpret it however they want. You know, and so people could have gone, or you know, the, the, these two saints, Saint Charles Borromeo, could have said, "What a terrible thing this technology, this mass media, is." Instead, you say, "You know what? This is a blessing. We can start printing books that teach all the clergy to t teach them the same thing, the same, you know, same teachings, the same education." Etc. We can make sure that a priest being formed in Italy will have the same formation or almost the same formation as somebody in Spain, as somebody in Germany, as somebody in Croatia, somebody in Peru by this time, or the Philippines, that it is possible to do this. And uh, you know, that, that same technology can be used and uh, so he became really a great saint, and we all owe really the church of today to what this man and again Saint uh, Robert Bellarmine as well did you know, for the church at the time. And so then it becomes a lesson to all of us. Again, you know, it doesn't matter when we live. You know, there are good parts and there are bad parts. You know, of our of our time, but. To, we do still believe, or hopefully believe, that the Holy Spirit is among us, and we better believe that, actually, that that is really part of our, our, our faith, that, the, that, the, that, the, that in fact the Spirit of Jesus is in, alive in the church even today, and that no matter what the situation may be, that we can turn it into something good. Yes, we have to be realistic about it. We can't be stupid or think that Jesus is going to solve all of our problems and so forth. He put us on this world to do something. But on the other hand, we, uh, we need never be depressed or fall into despair saying there's nothing we can do. It's all awful and so forth. No, we were given gifts. We're asked to use them. St. Charles uh, Borromeo used them in his time, were asked to do so as well. And yes, for in fact what we try to do in our time as well. All right, so please then let us stand and let us then present our petitions then to our God. And so then we first pray for the church that it always and everywhere, well, continue to uh, read the signs and never give up hope. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Pray for our leaders, those who find themselves in positions of authority, that they use that authority wisely. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Pray for our community here, that uh, yeah, we're not big. Uh, we're, we're the third poorest parish in the diocese, but we hold our own. We do quite well. And that, uh, that we give thanks to the Lord for what we have been given and that we continue to share what we have been given with, with the folks with, with our, in our community and around us. For this, let us pray to the Lord. We pray then, uh, we pray then, uh, for, for those who find themselves ill, and there's plenty of people who find themselves ill on this day or at this time of COVID and of just regular illnesses, as it were, uh, for all of them and for all those who have been, uh, we uh, have been, uh, 
but for the loss of loved ones, for all of them, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Uh, yeah, do we pray then in a special way then uh, on this day for the soul of uh, Earl Matsuko, the intention of this Mass? We pray to the Lord. And yes, we pray still for, for our country that, uh, well, we've gone through a lot. We still will probably be going through a lot, but that the Lord can not abandon us and continue to help us as we find our way uh, peacefully forward. For this, let us pray to the Lord. In silence, let us add our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we present these our petitions to you on this day. We ask that you hear them and that you grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the liturgy of the Eucharist. God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread that we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. So be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine that we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. God forever. Share my iniquities, please, and do then. Cleanse me from my sins. Our sacrifice is ready. So please pray, brothers and sisters, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. So look, O Lord, upon the offering uh, placed on your altar in of St. Charles, and by the power of this sacrifice, that as you made him an attentive pastor, outstanding in the merit of his virtues, so you may make us abound in good fruits by our works through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so then, with the angels and archangels and with a great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord to Jesus the Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Proclaim your death, O Lord. Profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and then with the rest of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, the Seven Holy Founders of the Servite Order, St. Philip Benizi in our, here in our church, St. Charles Borromeo on this day, and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may pray Jesus the Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please then let us stand, and let us then pray together then the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Peace there. Peace, peace, peace. Peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Please grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. And we pray together then the prayer on behalf of those who are watching us online, uh, an act of spiritual communion. We say together, my Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Gregory Christ, the body of Christ. 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 Cuerpo de Cristo. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. <clears throat> the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ.
Okay. Okay, so please stand. And uh, as, a, as a reminder, uh, the uh, Pro Sanctity Center, they will have adoration today from after this Mass all the way to 6 p.m. And uh, in fact, I was, uh, we were almost, or I was almost set to, to do it here, you know, and even brought out, you know, the, 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 the Luna and all that in, in there. And then I realized, wait a minute, the, you know, so the, they're going to do it. So I'm happy that the folks are, are doing. so please, you know, after this mass, please, uh, if you wish, you can go to uh, the, the uh, Blessed Sacrament Chapel. Again, depending on, you know, a, a sense of how things are, my, my sense is tomorrow we would have anyway the, the Blessed Sacrament exposed for an hour after the Mass, but we may again extend it through the whole feel or, or what have you, uh, just during this time. The diocese asked us yesterday to do it, and it just seems as, as long as there's confusion or, or at least some concern that we have a nice place to pray. Um, I did notice that immediately then yesterday after the mass, you know, someone put up already sign up sheets for the, uh, for exposition for the first Friday. Um, in this regard, please understand this that, okay, first of all, we have a funeral here on Friday. Now, in the past, what we would do, if there's a funeral on Friday, we would just move the Blessed Sacrament to the chapel for the time of the funeral. However, the chapel's rather small, and actually, like yesterday, we, we had a, pretty much a dozen people here at any given time, which is rather crowded there. What we're going to do tomorrow, on Friday is already, we've talked about this, Father Sebastian and I, the Father Sebastian has the funeral, and so after the funeral, he will expose the blessed sacrament. He'll be there for the rest of the day. Okay, so so that uh, through this week we will have the blessed sacrament out pretty much every day during the day. Okay, just uh, again for us to yeah to settle down. I will see you know how how it goes because it was it was quite nice anyway. And eventually we'll get back into the routine of the of the first Friday. Thursday, after both of the masses, we of course uh, the the uh, the Pro Sanctity Center has it every every Wednesday. Well, the, the, don't worry, we'll we'll talk about it, and as as you know, as a group, we will figure out how to how to do this. But for for now, you know, that's anyway what we're what we're going to do. Okay, let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, give us that determination which made St. Charles faithful in ministry and fervent through Christ our Lord. Amen. And then I just want to say that after Mass, I will be hearing confessions uh, by the uh, by the statue of Saint uh, you know, Saint uh, Philip over there, uh, and uh, tomorrow. Uh, Father Sebastian will be hearing confessions as well. All right? The Lord be with you. May Almighty God then bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended, so let us go forth to love and to serve the Lord. And let us salute Mary. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. <laughs>